Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. It is I, Brian, your favorite narrator in the whole world. <laughs> Pull up your comfiest chair, grab a drink of your choice, and get ready. Because D&D players of Reddit, what is the most creative character you've seen someone play as? Part 1. There was a campaign where the party came across a magical cauldron filled with boiling gold. They were told they could drop an item in and it would be turned to gold while retaining all of its other properties and be imbued with intelligence. They were warned that the intelligence might be malevolent. While the party debated what to drop in, the gnome rogue jumps in. He became gold-coated, which increased his armor class significantly, but also became cursed with an evil alter ego. There was much rolling to determine when and for how long he was forced to play as chaotic evil. A thief with level 1 of illusionist that passed himself off as an arch wizard, throwing fireballs and screaming, These beasts are immune to magic! In a fight was a funny experience. He was good at scamming NPCs though. One of my players was playing as an earth elemental cleric. They were sailing to some faraway island when everybody was dicking around and they knocked said cleric into the ocean. Of course he didn't float and sank straight to the bottom. He couldn't drown either technically. It took the players three sessions of underwater themed adventures to finally get him rescued. Because he had spent so much time under immense pressure on the ocean floor, he came out as a lava elemental. And now he can't set foot in wooden buildings and nobody can touch him without taking burn damage. If the players wind up in a particularly cold environment, they just crowd around him for warmth now, which means they don't need to build campfires anymore. Unfortunately, he is incredibly bright at night and has a negative seven stealth modifier. A necromancer who thought they were a cleric. Only the player and DM knew and had a list translating what the player said they were doing and what they were actually doing. As an example, spells and daily prep. So the others wouldn't catch on out of character. In his formative years, he came upon a book of forbidden spells. Being young and stupid, he assumed it was a book of divine rituals. Fast forward several years and he wanders the land preaching about the everlasting light. He's skilled in first aid and potions because not every scrape requires divine intervention but has some spells that will bring someone back from the brink of death. He also has a bodyguard who wears full plate who follows him around because he owes a life debt. Doesn't talk much though. The other players never discussed removing their own armor or eating or using the toilet, so nobody found it odd that the NPC never did. The other players also never took points in Knowledge Arcane to discover the spell effects that didn't match what they should. He got found out when one of the party members went down and he turned them into a zombie. The players were then in on the joke and weren't able to separate what they knew and what their characters knew, which is why they weren't told from the start. If the party member hadn't gone down, there was a plan to have a personal quest in a Trial of Faith style to see if he could unintentionally turn himself into a lich, and if the party would help him do so. Simon and Garfunkel. It was just for a one-shot, so I don't remember all the details. I believe Simon was a gnome wizard, and Garfunkel was a Goliath fighter or some other large race. Simon was a murderous psychopath that Garfunkel had accidentally paralyzed at some point in the past, to the point where Simon can't even speak. So he carries Simon around like a baby out of guilt, caring for him and protecting him. Simon's entire existence is seethed with rage, usually trying to kill Garfunkel and those around him, but always failing, with Garfunkel being completely unaware of Simon's burning hate for him. He was a stealth character, but all his stat points went into intimidation, so whenever he was spotted, he would just shout, You do not see Grog! and casually sneak past. <laughs> My current campaign is made entirely from characters, I assume he means people, who are new to D&D, myself included. So when building characters, my friend rolled mostly average stats with the exception of intelligence. So he has a negative three in that. So we basically determined that he is uh, illiterate. During our campaign, he's also referred to the DM as God as a joke. 
and he kept asking questions like, All right, God, what do we do about blank? So I made a joke that it looks like his character is actually communicating with God on a regular basis, but everyone around him just thinks he's insane and will never believe him. He then got the personality trait Divine Guidance, which allows him to have a helpful hint once per campaign session. So, canonically, his character can communicate with God, but to everyone else, he's just talking to himself as a result of his intellectual ineptitude. Personally, the most creative I've seen was a tiefling warlock who was constantly disguising himself as an elf cleric. All of the players, out of character, knew what he was, but he had the whole party, in character, convinced, and between his high charisma and the rest of the party's low intelligences, it didn't seem likely to change any time soon. I've got a friend who is a weird character machine. Most recently is an orc named Styrog, who believes that Weapons are a coward's weapon, and beats people to death with his shields. <laughs> Before that was Robert the Destroyer, a barbarian who threw ladders at people. <laughs> Please tell me he did one-liners too. There was $3.50 or Tree Fitty to his friends, a really creepy monk who could shoot vines out of his hands like Spider-Man, and of course, Justin Chandler, a shaman who saved literally all his gold till level 7, then used it to permanently enlarge and awaken his pet frog and deck it out with sweet gear. Chef kiss. Mwah. Edit. Back by popular demand. The credit for most of these goes to a uh, user named Ginger Syndrome, a few of mine as well. Vlak Gamesh. A 5th edition warlock who halfway through a random goblin encounter realized he was killing them for no reason and became a staunch defender of goblin rights. Harold the Great and Powerful was a bard who was absolutely useless, but in invested everything in bluff and insisted he was high level wizard. Also had a penchant for buying people's souls and then pushing them towards positions of power. The Bear Witch Project, aka Wit or Bruce Bariner, was a lycanthropy witch that spent most of his time in half bear form. When asked what his gut feelings were on a topic, he responded with, I have many feelings on guts. <laughs> I haven't seen it myself, but someone over at the subreddit DD Green Text posted his story about a gnome and a half orc. The gnome had the mount skill, and sitting on the orc's shoulders, they were both invincible. Would love to play with that idea sometime. Did a min max build to create a damage monster of a fighter? had to shortchange him in certain areas as far as wisdom and intelligence goes. I realized this was a bad idea the third or fourth time that I died during a single session because Brick had trouble realizing what was dangerous and what was not. Eventually, the cleric just tied a rope around his neck and led him around. <laughs> that seemed to help a lot. A few years ago on Reddit, I made the claim that D&D 3.5 gave you the ability to play literally anything you wanted, including a sentient goddamn wheelbarrow. <laughs> what? I ended up statting up a race of intelligent wheelbarrows. This bit me in the ass when someone decided to play one in one of my games, but I had to put my money where my stupid mouth was and let them. OCD druid with bag of holding. Would clean up battlefields and other places using the bag as a dustbin. Was hilarious halfway through the campaign when the druid used the bag as a ballistic weapon and emptied said bag. A player made a dwarf who was actually a human midget raised by dwarves. <laughs> he was a barbarian, was modeled after macho man Randy Savage. Yeah! He had a pet wolverine which he would throw at people while screaming, THE FESTIVAL SPECIAL! Ah, that wolverine didn't last too long. Randy throughout the campaign slowly went insane due to his fear of magic. Randy then began cutting off people's hands for no apparent reason. The legend of Macho Man ended when he attempted to suplex a dragon. Dwarf pirate that wanted to retire and become a farmer. I made my DM research cost of land, animals, reproduction rates, and such. I love my farm more than adventuring. I haven't done it yet, but I've always wanted to play as a true polymorphed chair. <laughs> Why? The chair was turned into a human, or any player race, and then started learning. 
may be becoming a wizard himself. I don't know how anyone would ever know since the change becomes permanent, but if he ever walked through an anti-magic field, he would just turn back into a chair and be gone forever. And no one else would walk through there for fear of being turned into a chair. <laughs> Three dwarves stacked in a trench coat. What a weird sentence. Upon meeting the character, there is a roll to see if they think the character is normal or see the three dwarves stacked. Uh, the whole character is a bit of a joke, but at the same time, it oddly works. Each character is its own class, and depending on the stack order, things change. Also, one is Guy Fieri as a dwarf for no good reason. Guy also has the adventure chef class. All right, ladies, we're going to Flavor Town. A friend of mine decided to be a smartass and play a character named Gok Cobbler. So yeah, the DM decided to play along and has made a good portion of our campaign revolve around the secret society of cobblers and their ancient feud with their enemies, the Haberdashers. There are a lot of magic shoes and magic hats. There's also a masterworked rifle named Blood Faucet that might be cursed to seek Haberdasher's souls. My girlfriend has made a character for our next campaign that is an elf fighter, but is only good at fighting when he is drunk. When he is not drunk, he is lawful evil and a bit of a scholar. When he is drunk, he rips off his shirt to reveal his muscles and becomes chaotic good. Narcoleptic Bard, currently in a campaign with this one. He doesn't do much and has the tendency to fall asleep at the worst times. Now don't crucify me for not knowing how to pronounce this, but I played as a Wemmick back in college and I loved that character. He was a druid and thus could only carry wooden weapons. So after thinking about it, I gave him a lance and then proceeded to get every feat you could for a knight on horseback. Trample, charges, etc, etc. I leveled like a monster class instead of a player class, aka slow as balls. But man, it was a hella fun character. He could do some insane damage by the end of the game. And if he had to get into close combat, he could do rake, rake, bite for damage. My favorite part though were his two animal companions. The first was a weasel that took levels of thief, so it was our trap dismantler and it eventually had vorpal front teeth, so it had a devastating bite attack. The second was, and I'm not kidding, a giant white blood cell. <laughs> what? It had been magicked out of a giant and made even larger, and it rode around on my druid's back. As the group's healer, it would blob onto them and heal them with a few levels of cleric. That's actually really ingenious. Mind you, my druid was teamed up with the lizard man barbarian, who was surprisingly smart, and the fey bard that would drink anything put in front of him, which is how he ended up as a half-elf woman of a different alignment by the end of the game. Hey everyone, Brian here. I hope you had a good time with the stories today, as I sure as hell did. If you couldn't tell from the intro alone, I've been feeling pretty good myself lately, so there's that. And I hope everybody else here has been feeling good too. Now I'm also working on a lot of stuff on my own, such as making sure my streaming gets going this month, so if you want to get involved with that in any capacity, go ahead and check the description below for my Twitter account, you can follow that and get more deets on that later. I do also want to say that I love reading stories about characters like this, creative characters, memorable moments, or defining quotes that stand out in the players' minds and hearts. These things are sentimental to so many people, and I want to share those epic moments and memories for everyone to hear. For example, I grew up hearing lovely stories about my uncle who used to play D&D since he was a teenager. He hand painted and at one point even whittled his own wooden characters way back on first edition. I love these types of stories because they make characters not only in game, but in real life too. So there's that. So without further fuss, I hope you had a good day and have a good night. Make sure to leave a like, and if you're new here, feel free to give us a subscribe too, so you always know when a new vid pops out. And if you want, you can share a story with us, and you can do so in the comments below or on our subreddit. Again, links in the description. And this is just my own personal request here. If you've been doing something cool lately, or, you know, something fun, be it a new trade or a hobby, or you just have some new success with jobs or anything at all that you want to share, go ahead and share it down below if you want, because I care about y'all as people as much as I do as viewers, if not more. That all said aside, may you have a good day and a good night again.
be safe, be happy, and we will see you next time. Bye for now.